Mid-60s Britain, a time where two youth-centric countercultures and the mods and the rockers are driven to violent riots and brutality aimed at the opposing group. Identity was everything to these two subcultures. This is Quadrophenia, a film adapted from the classic The Who double album of the same name focusing on a coming-of-age tale and the division between two countercultures, which in reality truly led to violence. The film focuses on Jim, a follower of the mod counterculture, an arrogant, pill-popping and insolent twerp. At a house party, Jim snogs a girl who isn't his girlfriend, hijacks the record player, and blasts the Who's My Generation, turning the living room into a mosh pit. He pins a newspaper clipping to his bedroom wall as he returns late one night, the article documenting a riot between the mods and rockers, an outburst of violence he wishes to participate in. During the beginning of the film, as he rides his scooter, the lyrics, Can you see the real me, doctor? are sung, illustrating early on the thematic concept of identity, and to what extent is our identity truly revealed, what it means to be one's real self. For Jim, he believes his real self is the mod lifestyle he is so dedicated to, yet he is unaware of the limitations of such a lifestyle. Jim catches up with an old friend called Kev after meeting in a bathhouse. Kev is now a rocker, the cultural opposite to Jim, and although they are civil with each other alone, as soon as Jim's mod friends enter through the cafe door, Jim quickly distances himself from Kev to keep up the appearance of his rivalry with the opposing group the rockers. Following the mod lifestyle means he also must succumb to the peer pressures that come along with belonging to a youthful social group. It would be deemed unacceptable if a mod was seen civilly catching up with an old friend who was a rocker. Kev visits Jim later as Jim is in his garden shed, tending to his scooter. They have a small chat about their vehicles. Jim drives a scooter and Kev drives a motorbike that he is immensely proud of. Their friendship and mutual respect illustrates that the divisions between the different social groups is genuinely superficial. The differences can be set aside and friendships can truly blossom. Kev even suggests the division is absurd, that both groups are the same as everyone is simply human. Differences in personality, style and character should be embraced, but at our cause, being human makes us all the same. Jim misses the sentiment behind the statement and claims he doesn't want to be like everyone else, which is why he's a mod. Although he's placing his stamp on individuality by joining a subculture that suits him the most, Jim misses the irony in claiming he doesn't want to be like everyone else, yet he wishes to be like other mods and the musicians he looks up to. Jim places such significance on the mod lifestyle that the sense of peer pressure and loss of identity without the mod culture motivate him to stay involved with it. Without the mod lifestyle, Jim feels there is nothing. It's a terrifying thought for a young person who places such emphasis on the subculture they belong to. With the intention of visiting Brighton for a large-scale mod meetup, Jim and his pals gather and begin planning, their priority being to get the drugs which they managed to achieve by breaking into a pharmacy and stealing them. The one mod teen called Spider is beaten in the streets by some rockers, motivating Jim and his group to chase them down for revenge. Jim's gang catch Kev who calls out to Jim for help placing Jim at a crossroads. Does he help Kev but sacrifice his social standing? Does he preserve his social status but irreparably damage his friendship with an old friend? The choice too difficult to make results in Jim attempting to call his gang off from Kev before riding away back home on his scooter, unable to watch or prolong the violence anymore. He was unable to decide and rode away. Both his friendship and his reliance on the mod identity meant too much for him, and riding away risks both. Still preparing for for Brighton, Jim gets a new suit, a haircut, and even attempts to shrink his jeans onto his legs for the skinnier jeans look. Towards Brighton, mods and rockers clash on the road as the rockers surround a mod called Chalk, causing him to crash his scooter off the road. This action serves as motivation later in the film when violence truly explodes. The violence is expected to hit Brighton as numerous police officers are patrolling the streets of the seaside town. The next day causes the ruckus to be brought, as the mods recognise the rocker who knocked Chalk off the road, prompting them all to storm an ice cream parlour, tearing the place apart and beating up anyone in a leather jacket. The violence spews onto the street, and the police, bringing in reinforcements, are clearly finding it difficult to keep the peace. Jim escapes the rioting with his girlfriend Steph down an alleyway, and into a yard where they shut a gate and within the heat of the moment, the excitement at its peak, they fuck. To Jim, this is the mod experience he has always hoped for, the violence aimed at rockers in Brighton, the bravado 
with his fellow mods and being with a girl he clearly has fond feelings for. The significance that Jim places on this lifestyle means that this series of events suggests that this is his peak. On returning home, Jim's mother is furious, knowing that during his time in Brighton he likely participated in the violent outbursts being reported. Jim is kicked out of the home, beginning his downward journey. He quits his job due to frustrations with taking his boss's orders. His relationship with Steph was always temporary, as she admits she only wanted a bit of fun, whereas to Jim this relationship meant the world. Placing such significance on something that is smaller to others indicates a sense of desperation with Jim. His whole lifestyle and world philosophy is crumbling as he realises how fickle it is, something that is hammered home when his scooter is trashed, hit in a collision with a postman's car. This mod lifestyle will not carry him any longer. In an act of defiant disbelief, possibly to recapture how he felt during his initial visit, he returns to Brighton, but everyone and everything has moved on. It has now returned to the quiet seaside town it once was. Upon seeing a scooter with the mod aesthetic, he recognises a mod from his time in Brighton, but no longer the rebellious and cool personality. He is a simple hotel bellboy. It's a frustratingly difficult idea for Jim to accept, but the pin is beginning to drop. The mod counterculture has its limitations, and for its members to be compatible with the wider world, they need to put the mod lifestyle aside. In a poetic ending, accompanied by the Who's Love Rain OME, Jim rides the scooter to a nearby cliffside and allows the scooter to fall over the edge. It is a metaphoric image. The scooter, decked out with mod memorabilia, is destroyed and disposed of. The action illustrates that Jim is putting the lifestyle far out of reach and behind him. He has learnt that he needs to grow, that it is necessary to learn how to live without this belligerent and violent lifestyle. It may be the beginning of adulthood for Jim. In conclusion, the film Quadrophenia develops a profound coming-of-age tale, focusing on Jim, an arrogant protagonist that is surprisingly relatable for any viewer who has found solidarity and significance in the subculture they once belonged to, without much foresight for how this lifestyle may impact future opportunities and relationships with friends and family. For Jim, he had to sink to his lowest to learn of how fickle it all truly was. Quadrophenia, while a stylish film, is also providing a cautionary warning to those who place too much importance on the things that in the end won't truly matter.